The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and put the good into baskets but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Jesus. Lord Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you understood all this? Jesus asked his disciples, and they answered, yes. I'm wondering how you would answer that question, because I want to respond, um, not completely, Jesus. I don't quite understand all that you're talking about, because he's given us in rapid-fire succession five things that the kingdom of God are like in today's gospel. They are like a, a mustard seed. They're like yeast. They're like, it's like buried treasure. It's like a fine pearl. It's like a net cast in the sea. It's as if Jesus is asking us not to spend too much time on each one of these. Don't overthink it. And yet then Jesus says, have you understood all this? They said yes. Well, I don't know whether I would have said yes. I'm, I'm still a little confused about what all these things mean. Now, as a reminder, the past two weeks, two weeks ago, we heard the parable of the sower, where the sower sows seeds on all kinds of soil, some rocky soil, uh, some thorny soil, some shallow soil, and some good soil. And we thought about, you know, the generosity of the sower. And last week, we heard the parable of the weeds and wheat, where Matthew, the master storyteller who likes to talk about judgment, he separates people, you're either weeds or you're wheat. Well, we talked about that last Sunday. Well, now today, it's the kingdom of God again in rapid-fire succession in parables. And remember we said a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Earthly story, something that you and I can understand, heavenly meaning. And to be frank, I don't think there's anyone better positioned than Jesus to tell us what the kingdom of God is you just kind of wish he would say, here's what the kingdom of God is. Instead, he tells us what the kingdom of God is like. And for those of you who are, uh, studied English and grammar, you know what, uh, what's called the difference between a simile and a metaphor. Remember a metaphor? Yeah, the old joke about what's a metaphor? It's for cows to graze in. That's the old joke. What's a meadow for? for cows to graze in. Well, a metaphor is a comparison that doesn't use the word like or as, as opposed to what's called a simile. A simile uses a comparison and uses that word like or as. And in today's gospel story, you have five of them. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, like yeast, like buried treasure, like a fine pearl, like a net cast in the sea. That's a simile. And so Jesus uses this image. Again, we would prefer him to tell us exactly what is the kingdom of God. Well, it's a little bit like trying to describe God. Have you ever had that question? Somebody comes up to you and says, tell me about why you worship God. You can't see him. You can't go to church and you're facing an ornate wall, affirming things you can't prove. So tell me why do you have a belief, a faith in God? And so we try to say, what is, we can't really say what it is, but we can say what it's like. It's like having a relationship with a good friend, with a brother, with a sister. All those kinds of uh, images are a little bit like uh, what's called a simile. In the simile, Jesus tells us five, a mustard seed. So a couple years ago, we, here at the church, we actually uh, gave out people with little mustard seeds on a card. Turns out we had one parishioner here for the nine o'clock service, still has his in his wallet, where it said, all you need is the faith of a mustard seed. It's a tiny seed, and we said about seeds, when you plant it in the ground and it begins to germinate, you go looking for that seed again, and you're not going to find it. It's gone. What has come up is new life. And that seems to be what Jesus is talking about. You're not going to find that original seed. It's gone. What has come about is new life in ways we didn't even know existed. Like yeast. Those of you who like to bake bread know what yeast is all about. Leaven. Leaven. You put that yeast in there to raise or have bread rise up and give it height. Yes? You go looking for that original yeast in that bread, you're not going to find it anymore. It's gone. And somehow that yeast has made the bread, the dough, rise. The kingdom of God is like buried treasure. Whenever you just, These are a little bit harder to understand, but here's a man who discovers that there's a buried treasure somewhere, and what he does is he sells all of his possessions, and then he goes and buys that field. I like buried treasure stories, treasure hunts, you know. I'm kind of a Dan Brown fan. Da Vinci Code, you know, and the lost symbol. A lot of his books are about finding treasure in, in secret places, and you have to figure out the right code to find where that treasure is hidden. In this particular instance, the kingdom of heaven is like that buried treasure. You'll do anything to, you'll sell all your possessions in order to just get that treasure that is buried there on that piece of property. Which leads to the fourth metaphor, or the fourth simile, is like the kingdom of God is like a fine pearl. Not just a string of pearls, but one single pearl that is of such great value to you that you're willing to go sell all that you have and get it. That pearl is such a treasure to you that you can't imagine life without that one single pearl in your possession. And then the last simile is what's called casting a net into the sea, gathering all kinds of fish, throwing that net into the sea, and whatever you bring in, you bring in. And you let God do all the work of separating the good from the bad. Now my question to you who are watching this, if you see all five of these similes, what do they have in common? I looked at all, th all five of them this week when I was looking at this gospel, and I got thinking, what is it that they all seem to have in common? Somebody said at our earlier service, they said, well, the love of God. Yeah, that's true. But one of the other things that I noticed is that in each case, all five are hidden. The, the, the mustard seed is hidden in the ground. The yeast is hidden in the, in the dough. Buried treasure hidden in the ground. A pearl is hidden out there in some jeweler somewhere. And the net cast in the sea is trying to find that special fish, that big haul of fish, that whatever God brings your way, that's what you're going to take. Somehow, each one of these things are hidden in areas where we can't see it. Buried treasure, mustard seed, yeast, a net, all are hidden somewhere.
And you have to go out of your way to find these. That seems to be what they have in common. My question is why? Well, again, it's like trying to describe your relationship with God. And from time to time, I have had people ask me, once you get on beyond the churchy kind of stuff, what denomination are you part of? What church do you belong to? Once you get beyond that to the kind of questions, tell me about your faith. Why do you believe in God? Why do you love God? And then you start to describe it. Well, it's a little bit like this. That's a simile. It's a little bit like a mustard seed. It may seem small, but it has the ability to grow into something enormous. It's a little bit like yeast. It gives my faith, it pumps up my faith to have go into church and to hear God's word. It gives me strength and height. It's like buried treasure. I have to go out of my way. I have to get out of bed in the morning to go and have to struggle with the issues of my faith. It's like a pearl that is so important to me, I can't imagine life without this part of who I am, my faith. And like a net cast in the sea, it's like you just simply, whatever comes your way, comes your way, and you'll accept it because God is there somewhere. Now the question is, why would God hide it? Why would God hide the kingdom? Well, I'm wondering, and here's my suggestion, and here's my point today. I'm wondering... Maybe, just maybe, God is hiding the kingdom in plain sight, right in front of us. Have you ever had the experience of when you look at a flower, you look at all kinds of flowers, and you're kind of like, there's just one that sort of stands out? Or maybe a picture, or a piece of art. You've looked at it maybe a thousand times, and somehow, one time, it captivates your imagination. That's like the kingdom of God. It's like you hearing a bird in the morning. You hear birds every morning, but why that bird? Why that particular morning did it stand out for you more than others? That is like the kingdom of God. It's making something stand out for you that you've seen a thousand times. Maybe it's a relationship with a friend. Maybe it's a phone call that changed your life. Somehow, hidden in plain sight is the kingdom of God. It's open to all of us if we have eyes to see it. Amen.